to join. Hello and welcome. I'm going to just give everyone like a minute to hop on. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Good day to you, whatever time zone you're in. Go ahead and give it a minute. Great. All right, here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We are just getting started. And I know it's like we're gearing up for the holiday weekend. So really appreciate you all taking the time to come on out and show support. And probably just give it another 30 seconds before we get started. And everyone, you can feel free to utilize the chat too if you have any questions or if you want to just pop in and say hi. But I am going to go ahead and get started. So thank you all for joining. For those of you who don't know, my name is Mylan Green. I'm the Diversity and Inclusion Coordinator here at Instant Teams, responsible for programming, communications, and corporate strategy. And in honor of Pride Month, we're gonna have a discussion today about pronouns, identity, and the intersection of race. And we wanted to have this conversation, one, in order to normalize having the conversation, and also as a way to strengthen our team dynamics and how we navigate things around identity, around race, around maybe some of these subjects that are a little bit more tricky to talk about. And I think especially so being in a remote work environment where we don't always have opportunities to just naturally have these discussions. So we have our special guest today, Blix, who is going to be a part of this conversation with us. I also want to preface this by saying I primarily go by she pronouns, um, so just to share that with you all. And But before I pass it over to Blix for their introduction, I wanted to give some information about some things that we have coming up at Instant Team. So first, for anyone who's attending right now live, I'm gonna send you a survey tomorrow. So I really want this information at the Lunch and Learns to be relevant, to be informative, to be impactful. And in order to do that, I need to hear your feedback. So look out for that survey tomorrow. It's only gonna be about one to two minutes long. And then also in July, we have Disability Pride Month. So if you or anyone in your family identifies as part of the differently able community and you'd like to share suggestions for any content that we can create, please send me a DM and we're gonna work that into our lineup for July. And then finally, our employee resource groups are now community impact groups and we have a new parent community impact group starting in July. More information on that will be in Slack. So I know that was a load of information, but I want to let you all know what's going on. And without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic to Blix, who's going to give you a brief intro, and then we'll get started. Yeah, thank you so much, Mylin. And I am so honored to be here. And um, yeah, so my name is Blix. I use they, them pronouns. And um, definitely a little nervous to be to be doing this, but I feel like this is part of the work and um, I'm just so, so glad I can contribute in this way. 
Um, so a little bit of background about me. I'm based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I spent a long time on the West Coast, but recently moved back to the Midwest. Um, and I'm currently working at a company called Paradigm, and we focus on DEI support for different organizations, um, whether that be like trying to come up with a DEI strategy or helping to train their employees. So really impactful work. Um, it's been super great to be a part of this organization. I'm also a military veteran, so I spent about three years in the Coast Guard and I was based in New York, New Jersey, and San Francisco. Um, that's what brought me to the West Coast originally. And what else about me? I gotta make sure I get everything. Um, yeah, I went, to, I went to graduate school in San Francisco. So I got my doctorate in Chinese medicine. And when the pandemic hit, my, my career trajectory changed a little bit, but I'm still, trying to figure out kind of how I want to incorporate that into my um, work moving forward. But for now, I'm working with a company doing DEI, which has been great. Um, and I think that's it for my intro. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for taking the time with us today, Blix. We're happy you're here for some impactful conversations. That's from Aaron in the chat. Um, yeah. So that was a great introduction. And let's just hop right in. Again, if anyone has any questions, has any comments, please utilize the chat. Um, so first, Blix, why, um, let's kind of just go back to the, the fundamentals. So first, in your opinion, what are pronouns and why is speaking about them in the workplace, why is that important? Why is that relevant right now? Yeah, um, so a pronoun is just a word that we use in, in replace for a noun. So we use them all every day, um, whether we know it or not, we're, we're most likely very habitual in our usage of them. Um, and I've been super passionate about this topic of, about using pronouns in the workplace. One, because we already do it and it's just bringing awareness on, on how we're doing it. And two, because um, you know, I, someone who is trans, I don't use the typical she, her, he, him pronouns. I use they, them pronouns. Um, and so I, I feel passionate about the topic because I, I really believe that um, the more we can just talk about it and, and be upfront about what our pronouns are and um, who uses what, the more we can normalize it. And also showing that you know, queer and trans people can be a part of corporate environments. I think for a long time and for a lot of reasons, and there's nothing wrong with not being a part of corporate environments, but like I'm someone who wants to be in professional spaces and I've had a hard time navigating that and, and figuring out where I can be honest with my employer and where I should hold back because I don't want to either ruffle feathers or I don't want to not get hired because I'm I use they, them pronouns or because I'm trans or because of whatever. Um, and so, you know, my current role has been great because I was able to apply using my pronouns and that has been embraced and it's been a learning curve for some people, but for most people they're, they're on board with it. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. And Thank you for your transparency around the challenges. You know, I know identifying as a Black cisgender woman with natural hair, one of the challenges that I faced in a corporate setting was anytime that I went to go interview, being hyper aware of my hair and was I going to be able to get into the job? Were they going to ask me to change my hair? Did I need to hide it in some way? And I think, you know, if you're not having those experiences, you don't um, it's sometimes hard to empathize or understand how much added stress that brings just in you showing up as yourself for the job and being able to do your job well. So, you know, you kind of touched on those challenges. Could you go into a little bit more like some of what were those challenges like for you in navigating that workspace as a trans person? Um, what did you experience? Yeah, I think, um, and I think, 
what you just said is totally spot on. You know, it's it's hard to navigate spaces where you don't quite know how you're going to be received, whatever that is. And we we all experience that to some degree, but some more than others. And that's just the reality. Um, some of the challenges that I experienced is is pretty much from the get go of of the application process. Like where I remember the when I first transitioned and I was applying for jobs, I really grappled with what, what, how, how do I present myself on my resume? Do I, do I lie and say that I'm, I use she, her pronouns just so I can get the job? Or do I be honest and say, I use they, them pronouns. I'm trans. This is my lived experience and hope that they'll see that as an asset rather than a liability or, or a concern. Um, and luckily I have a, a strong support system and my sister was the one who convinced me to just be your true self. Like, like if, if they don't want you because of this, you're, it's not a place you want to be. And so that is really where I've tried to navigate from while being in the corporate environment. And I think the other thing is, is once getting into that space and getting the job, where, where, how do I hold space for people learning? Cause I have a ton of compassion for that. I really do. Cause, cause I used to be someone who didn't know about this until I knew about it. Right. And so how do I hold space for people that are learning and how do I not let that impact my work and me being able to show up authentically. And, um, Luckily, I've been able to navigate it day by day. And it's it's really interesting how much people show up for you in those spaces and how much you can learn from each other. And it's it's constant, it's a constant balancing act of kind of what I said, like having compassion and then also holding holding steady to what's true for me and what kind of my boundaries are. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I love that, especially speaking about the support systems, those support networks are so important. And then that compassion bit. And, you know, I definitely know in my in my lived experience that as I'm speaking and sharing more, which oftentimes it feels so vulnerable a lot of times to be the one who's saying the things or be the one who's starting the conversation. But in my experience, as one person does that, everyone starts to feel like they have permission to do the same thing. And it's like this ripple effect, this domino effect where we can have more authentic conversations and we're bringing more of ourselves to the workplace, which means we're creating better, which means we're producing better, which means we're just feeling better on our day to day. Um, so I definitely resonate with that. And, you know, I wanna get into some, some you know, like practical, steps how can we apply this so you know and again we're just talking about our lived experience our personal opinions but how do you think someone should ask about someone's pronouns in the workplace how do you start having that conversation yeah um i love this question too and and i just want to emphasize this i you know i'm not an expert on the topic i'm just an expert on my own experience and so this is just my opinion um, but I think it's a really important question because a lot of people are like, okay, I'm, I'm on board with this, but how do I put it into action? How do I make mistakes and recover from mistakes? And so I think it's really important. Um, I'd say it's appropriate to ask people's pronouns whenever you don't know and whenever you need to use someone's pronouns. But the, the caveat to that is ideally we're in a world and we're in an environment where we're all of us can get ahead of it before having to ask. So what I mean by that is we start to normalize putting pronouns in our email signature, putting pronouns in our Zoom name, putting pronouns in our Slack name, making it a part of our name because it's a part of our identity so that people, if they're wondering, they can actually do their own research and find out before having to interrupt a, a discussion or interrupt a flow of something to ask someone their pronoun to make sure they get it right. Because sometimes it can be jarring to do that where it just is kind of throws the conversation off and then you have to get back into that. So I, I have compassion for 
for people why they don't want to ask. Um, but if we can get ahead of it, if we can start to normalize having pronouns kind of all over the place and not, not in an in your face way, but as like, this is helpful just as much as my name is helpful. Like if you want to refer to me, you, you need to find out my name. Right. And so getting ahead of it, I think really helps alleviate some of that discomfort. But then again, it's, there are going to be times where I've had to ask people their pronouns and vice versa. And hopefully the more discussions and the more knowledge we have around this, the less people will be thrown off by that or offended by that. Cause ideally we're asking anybody, anybody's pronouns that we don't, we haven't got confirmation on who, what they are, regardless of what they look like. I love that. Thank you so much. And then actually, while you were speaking, I realized that my name still said instant team. So then I just went ahead and updated my name and added my pronouns in the pronouns that I use most often. So I love that example because we can do this in real time. It doesn't have to be like, oh, when I get around to it, you can just take any opportunity to add that in. And I also love the idea, like something that I've been practicing is just introducing myself with the pronouns that I use most often in conversation. And sometimes I won't even ask because sometimes I might feel like, we're just getting to know each other. I don't, I don't want to, maybe I feel like I'm crying. Maybe I don't feel like it's the right space. So instead of asking, I'll just introduce mine to just open up the conversation. Like this is a place where you can speak and you can share your pronouns if that's what you want to do. Um, because I know personally, I've been in positions where someone has asked me my pronouns and because I primarily go by she, her, and I don't want to have a whole nuanced conversation around it. I just don't want to talk about it with them. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too. I don't want to have the conversation all the time. So um, I think it's okay to just kind of gauge and know when you want to, how you want to, but also that there's no formula. And it's really just in the moment of, of being curious and maybe starting with sharing. And then I see in the chat, um, it takes courage to be this authentic in our culture. We need more patience and tolerance, definitely, a hundred percent. And by the way, if you all have any questions or any more comments, thank you so much for participating. Just go ahead and drop them in the chat. Um, so Blix, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about your experience. This is something that we talked about um, before. But what is your experience, you know, and you could be as broad and general as you want to, um, but with transitioning and what are some of the benefits and the challenges of, of going through that tr transition, especially while being in the corporate world? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say to that question, my overall experience is I've experienced an incredible amount of peace and happiness since since transitioning and since really coming to my true identity um, and and understanding it, it it really to me felt like the last puzzle piece in a puzzle that I couldn't find a place to and I finally found it and so it was like the most relieving feeling um, but the other piece of that is it was pretty terrifying at the same time because I knew I was gonna have to have some tough conversations. So it's interesting because my overall process, I, I had some internal struggle with it for a, a long time, but once I came, came to about it, it was really relieving and really beautiful for me personally. And um, the, I think the biggest fear was the socially transitioning. How do I, how do I have conversations with the employers? How do I have conversations with my family? Um, how do I go into spaces and, and try to figure out if I'm going to be safe or not? And, and those types of um, kind of things that came up. So, so I do find it interesting because, you know, based off my own experience, the transitioning part was the best part for me. There were sure, sure there were there were uh, challenges within that, like physically and and mentally. And I'm still still transitioning to this day. But um, 
most of it was really good, you know? And so the hardest part was like, how do I integrate into society and how do I, how do I, um, how do I gauge like where I'm going to land with other people? I think that is the hardest part um, because there's been times where I find myself in really icky situations and I, I want to get out. Um, but that's not to do with me that that's to do with other people's own opinions and feelings and discomfort around around it so yeah <laughs> thank you thank you and you know kind of going into that a little bit more so how were how were some ways that you figured out um how to really navigate you know we we spoke about um normalizing just using pronouns um we spoke about you know, just how we show up, but what are some other ways um, that you've navigated showing up as your authentic self um, in the in a work environment, in a corporate setting, um, just to kind of give some context and some and some maybe practical steps that people can take if they are feeling like they want to show up more, if they're feeling like they're leaving parts of themselves at home and they would like to show up, they would like to present them themselves more fully, more wholly in the workplace? Like what are some things that you've seen work in your own life? Yeah, I think this is another great question because showing up fully as yourself at work doesn't just have to do with gender. There's many pieces that we we want to show up fully with at work and it's we're, we're all trying to gauge it. You know, this is just one aspect of showing up in the world fully. So I think it, this applies to everybody. Um, I guess my first comment would be like, protect yourself first. So, so emotionally and, and spiritually, however that looks for you, um, keep your own safety in mind first. Like for me, that looks like I don't have to share everything with everybody because that to me, that's, that's not, oh, sorry, I got to turn my slack off. Um, that doesn't always help me do my job better or it doesn't help me feel supported better. So like I look from the lens of like, what is going to help me do my job better? And sometimes that involves, that integrates different like pieces of myself that need to show up to work, but not everything has to for me to be able to do my best work. So really that would be my first thing is figure out what you know you need to bring and, and make sure you're safe while doing that. Um, and I think safety for me at work was there were, um, at all my, all my jobs, I've, I've worked at a variety of different kind of startups and, and some have felt safer than others. And one that didn't feel very safe at all. I had some really good colleagues though. And I had, I had one, one friend in particular that I felt was like a true ally to me and really helped me navigate difficult spaces. She, you know, she was a cisgendered woman um, and she helped me navigate spaces that I didn't quite fully know how to. And, and she, she checked in with me and advocated for me. And so that would be my other piece. If possible, find someone at your place of work that can be an ally to you. Um, because ultimately it's, it's kind of what I was saying earlier. It's about how can we do our best work? It's not like that's what it's about. How can I, how can I do the best job that I'm hired to do? And, and sometimes that means kind of leaning emotionally on colleagues and you didn't really expect that, but here, here we are, you know? Um, so that, that would be my two pieces of advice. I'm sure I'm going to think of more later, but, but those are the two that come to mind. I love that. Thank you. And yeah, if you think of anything else, let me know and I'll share it with our community. But just to kind of reiterate what you just said, I think that question is so powerful. What parts of myself to really um, to really check in and see what parts of myself do I need to bring to the table in order to do the best possible work here at my job? And if there's something that is not contributing to that, Maybe that's not even for me to bring, but just being honest and knowing, you know, actually hiding this aspect of myself is limiting my ability to really show up fully in this workplace, then I need to find out a way to integrate it. And then also finding allies, finding people 
who are supportive emotionally, um, physically, spiritually, et cetera, in the workplace that we can lean on. Um, and to just to backtrack a little bit more, would you define what cisgender is, just in case there's someone who is not familiar with that term? Yeah, so cisgender is the you identify with the gender you were assigned at birth, whereas transgender is you don't identify with that. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just going to go back into the chat. I see LaShonda wrote, don't start with saying no offense, but I think you acknowledge that it's potentially offensive when you do. I totally agree. Like if someone is like, not to be racist, but, and I'm like, oh, you kind of, you, you put me on edge <laughs> just by saying that. So being like, you know, really intentional with our language. Um, and then Amy said, thank you for sharing your story. So great to get to know you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, so we are rounding up. We're in the last five minutes. If there are any more questions, any more comments, please drop them into the chat. But, um, you know, kind of to round us off or finish this up, Blix, in your opinion, what are some things that business leaders and employees can do to create more inclusive workspaces, um, specifically remote? Because you work, you're you're working for a remote company. We're a remote company. Um, so, what are some things in your experience that you've seen that worked or that would be good to implement? Yeah, um, I think organizations have a lot of room to grow in this area, and I think it's it's actually really exciting because. I think that they have a lot of power to really support um, people like myself at this moment in time. And so what I'd say is, you know, I'm biased. I work for a company that that does DEI strategy and training, but I, I mean, I would suggest hire and look into um, getting a really solid DEI strategy, DEI training that's based off experts who, who understand the space and know that the space is growing and always changing. So that would be my one, one, um, one recommendation um, because ultimately it's about like, not only is it the right thing to do, but in order for businesses to be sustainable and last, I, I really truly believe that DEI has to be a part of the conversation in every aspect of the business. So that would be one thing. Um, the other thing is, is a small thing that has huge impact. And we already kind of talked about it, but sharing your pronouns, like always, as much as you can, you know, we're, we're not, I, there's times where I forget to, too, but we're not always going to be perfect. But the more you can do that, that is such a huge indicator that you are um, aware of pronouns and that, you know, that others might not have the same as yours and that we can't necessarily tell people's pronouns by just looking at them. So as a leader to show up with your pronoun, pronouns on Zoom or your email or Slack or all of it ideally, um, that's a huge, huge indicator. So that's a small thing that has a big impact. Um, the other thing I would say is, is do the work yourself. So, so really be open to learning and, um, and changing your mind and learning from people's lived experiences at work or outside of work. You know, I think I, I have room to grow in this also. Like I always have to be open to learning and changing my opinion because I'm not everybody's experience. I haven't experienced everything that everybody else has. And so I think once we once we understand that about DEI, I think that it takes a lot of pressure off because if we know that things are always gonna be changing and we always have to get better, we're never gonna get it perfect. None of us are. So like, that's just the reality. If we can all get on board with that, then I think it takes a lot of pressure off. Um, and then let's see, the last thing I would say is um, if you can do your best to eliminate gendered language. So things like saying, um, you guys, you know, maybe we can switch to everyone or people or folks, you know, trying to eliminate ways of, of how we constantly gender everything has a big impact as well. Um, and then one other thing I want to say, I know I said that was my last one, but the other thing is if you do make a mistake as a leader or an executive, or even just a, a direct report or employee, like do your best to just listen to a mistake that you made 
and not get defensive and learn from it and then and then make a change and then move on and then we all get back to our work and everything's great you know and and it's a moment of connection that we can grow from each other rather than being super defensive um yeah i've had to learn the hard way from that as well and and i think being in this space has forced me to to just acknowledge that I'm not going to get it right all the time. And that is okay. It's about how I respond and how I move forward from that. That was such a great answer. Um, and so I just want to recap that because I think you said so many great things there. So um, one, just making DEI a part of the conversation in every facet of the workplace and even just using outside um, experts and resources to really build those processes um, to normalizing just using pronouns all the time, just, just sharing them, having them in our email signature, on our Zooms, self-education. So really put, putting in the time and the work and the effort to learn outside of you know what we know and really open up our perspectives. Um, eliminating gendered language, which is something I'm totally guilty of. I will use gendered language. And when I catch myself doing it, I'll even say out loud, oh, I don't use gendered language anymore. I kind of say that out to the group because I want to normalize um, making mistakes. It's okay. It's all right. We're going to make mistakes. We do make mistakes. But the point is that we're trying. We're trying to be more inclusive. And that's what's so important. And then as a leader, listening, not de being defensive and being open to change. So these are such great, great, great um, tips to lead us with. I see things in the comments. Um, thank you for your patience and sharing your story and thoughts. We appreciate you, Blix. Thanks for being here with us today and sharing. Um, thank you for the shout out, Jason. Appreciate you. And that's it. Um, so we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you all for joining. Again, you will have a survey tomorrow. Um, let us know your thoughts about this event. And uh, thank you so much, Chuck. And until next month, we will we will see you. So enjoy your holiday weekend and goodbye, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Blix. Bye. Bye.